In the last lesson, we have created a form where the user can submit the item details from the front end. Now, if you look inside the store method, we are just getting all the data supplied by the user, creating a new instance, assigning all the required values, and finally we are saving it into the database. Now, the only problem here is we are not validating the data. So what will happen if someone just submit an empty form? Let's check it out. Here is our home page. Here's the form. I'm not adding any value. And create. Here it is still showing us the response item created. Now let's look into the DB whether the item is inserted or not. Open the database. Now let's browse the table items. Here you can see the last row. It's having only three fields ID created at and updated at. But name, quantity and price is empty. As the user have not supplied any value into the input fields, that's why it's storing an empty or null value. By default, the columns we create through Adonis migration are nullable. If in case you want to add a not null rule to a column, then you can change the not nullable method. I will show you how we can do that. Inside our migrations folder, here is our columns. So, suppose you want to make the name field not nullable, then you can just change the method not nullable. Now, we need to So here we are using the create method of schema. Inside the create method, we will add all the validation rules for the database columns. So the first field we want to validate is name. So name is of type string. Adonis validator provides schema types to validate whether the input supplied by the user matches the type or not. Inside the string method or schema types, we can pass two parameters. The first parameter is an object. And inside the object, we can pass two options, escape and trim. Escape will escape any HT special characters with HTML entities. And for trim, it will trim any spaces from left or right side of the string we passed. 
The second parameter of string is of type array and it can contains any number of rules. Here we are using rules dot required for the name field and for the other two we have applied schema types number for price and quantity. Initiate the validation process. Here what we are doing is we are using request.validate method and inside the method we are passing our schema name and once the validation process is done it will return an object containing all the validated values. So now we need to replace request.all with the validated data. So that's it. We have added our validation rules. Inside our create.h file, we are having three inputs. Now, after each input, let's add the validation error message. So here what we are doing is we are wrapping our validation error message into a if block. Inside the if block we are passing a condition if the flash messages contain errors dot name. Errors object is basically returned when there is some error in the validation process. Inside the if block we just added a single p tag and inside the p tag we are displaying flash messages dot get errors dot name so if there is any validation error then it will just get the validation error message and display it inside the p tag let's do the same for the other fields So it's done. Now let's save it and check it. So let's give it a try. Now the first thing we will do is submit it without any fields. So here we are getting our validation errors. For the name field we are getting the same validation error twice. It's just because when the schema type validation that is schema dot string is applied to this input it's failed because we have not supplied any value into this input and again when the rules dot required validation will check whether the input is supplied or not then in that case it will also get an empty value that's why another error message will generate and for the other two fields this error message is generating from schema type validation that is schema 
dot number now let's submit the form again but this time we will place the value for price and quantity this time we are not getting any error for price and quantity however we are getting error for name as because we have not supplied any value this time also but if you notice carefully then you will see this time we should get the value of price and quantity as because we have already filled it in our case we are not getting the values just because we have not used the value attribute of input let's get back to our view and add that attribute so let's add the value so here what we are doing is if the value for name exists in the flash message then we will get that otherwise it will be empty let's do the same for the other two fields save it now we will try the same thing here we are getting the values we have passed earlier so this is how the validation work in Adonis